And we're live. Welcome back, everyone. Hi, hey. friendos who don't have steak. <laughs> Vincent, fascist, thank you for joining us. So just to jump right back in. Uh, last session, our young group of friends oh were asked to collect a bag or two of crabs for the Duke's table. The message delivered by a rather disgruntled and dismissive <laughs> Beatrice, or B, a slightly condescending warning not to go looking for black claw or other trouble. With Cade's clever suggestion of using Thane's arrows to tease crabs out from the rocky crags and tidal pools, they find their misfortune that some things don't like to be prodded. After a nearly disastrous encounter with Black Claw, a giant cave scorpion, several injuries are sustained, and Fen is poisoned while harvesting a souvenir. Terrible storm rolling in, the group staggers back to the road, encounter a crazed boar and the Norn, manservant of Winston, Duchy's wizard. Warm fire, good food. Ben's sickness is tended to, albeit with a terrible night filled with feverish nightmares. During their stay, Yola and Thane showed some inherent knack for magical scrying device. Just before bedding down for the night, the master ranger Marlin shows up and shares tales of the Green Hollow Elves to a fascinated Thane. Which brings us to the present. The soft pitter-patter of rain has abated. The summer sun shines through cracks in some loose boarding of the hunting cabin. Marlin is nowhere to be found, 
and a pale-looking Fen with sunken bags under his eyes sits at the table slowly sipping a steaming hot venison stew with a rough-sewn blanket wrapped over his shoulders. Party slowly awakens. Ta-da! I'm awake. Ah, oh, that was refreshing. Yeah, but we might want to hurry back home. I have a feeling some of us are going to be in trouble. Yeah, five more minutes. Wake up. Yeah, five, five more minutes. I kick him in the side. Where's our gracious host, anyway? Literally, as you say that, the uh, front door, or the only door of the cabin, um, opens with a, a loud creak, and you hear um, Winston, the uh, elderly bearded mage, uh, strolling back in, kind of adjusting his robe somewhat, retying the belt at his waist. Like, ah, good morning. I trust that you have had a pleasant sleep. Yeah. Yes. You'll look can barely be seen under her hair, by the way. Her hair has just overtaken her. Uh, she's got this curly cousin it look going on right now. Even as you're you're laying there in your massive hair, um, he, oh god, I forgot his name already. <laughs> Pyrrhus, the uh, pet um, fairy dragon of Winst of uh, Winston, is kind of made a nest out of your hair in the night. Excellent. Uh, he's kind of wrapped up in there, and you might have some trouble extricating him. Nay, there will be no trouble, because I will not try. <laughs> um, so yeah, Winston's coming in, and he's like, Ah, well, uh, I understand that you'd like to sleep in. Oh, I miss those days. Sometimes everyone needs a little bit of extra meditation. But you should all be getting back now. You have quite a bit of a walk. I dare say your parents will be worried. Yeah. We're in no rush for the trouble that awaits us. <laughs> well, I mean, some of us might be. We, we do have to get back to our families. Also, could you not kick someone awake next time? That's very rude. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> yes, but it's still really rude. It woke you up, didn't it? Yeah, not exactly the way I want to be woken up next time. You know what? How about this? I'll be your alarm clock in the morning, and I will wake you up with a kick straight in the ribs. What if you wake up before me? That's a fair point. I probably won't wake you up. Ah, uh, the trivialities of youth. Come, come. If you hurry, I can travel with you. Maybe it'll allay some concerns. Wonderful. I appreciate it. We best be going, then. So Thane, being a teenage boy, uh, does that thing where he just kind of, like, looks up in the general direction of his hair, even though he can't see it, and then licks the palm of both hands and slicks it straight back, <laughs> and then it's perfect. A bed record look. Takes effort. Yes. And it's just completely unfair for anyone who has ever had to actually put effort into making their hair look good. Right, Yola, the... on the other hand, mm -hmm. extracts a hairbrush from some unknown place deep within her hair and makes some vague attempt to pull it out of her eyes before giving it up and just letting it stick wherever the hairbrush stopped. <laughs> As you pull at it, you notice there's a few teeth marks on the handle now. Excellent. And uh, while everyone else is getting themselves put together, uh, the the elderly mage walks over to Fen and, and checks on you. It's like, and how are you feeling, son? Had a bit of a rough night. I feel... Like I've been poisoned and left to die. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you have. I can't speak for the left or dead part. Your friends, after all, took good care of you. But 
Uh, oh, yeah, poison will do that to you. Well, you you're young yet. With you're, us. you're young yet. You, you'll be fine. Can we not do that again? Ah, uh, yes. No one warned me that you might wake up with a bit of a headache. I assure you, I will speak with Beatrice later. Yeah, I really doubt it was actually her fault. It's not like she called up Black Claw and, and ordered him to come after us once we got to the beach. That would just be silly and very fantastical. Oh, but I want to know which one of the adults assigned such a task to us. Probably my parents, if we're being honest. They've done it before. That is true. Well, if it was a test, we failed. I don't know what you're talking about. We killed Black Claw. We have proof. We have two claws right here and the stinger, I think. Do we still have the stinger? Penn is going to proudly uh, pat a pocket or one of his pockets. There you go. We have three proofs. Pr pr we have. Whatever, you understand. <laughs> three proofs! I proved the threes! Use your words. For a banquet that was last night. Yes, and? We got stuck out in the storm after slaying a monstrous beast that's the thing of legends. I think, honestly, that we deserve another banquet. <laughs> Let's see what we can do about it, then. Yes, well, well... Anyways, let's uh, get home. Well, we'll see, we'll see about that. <laughs> Let's be going, yes? Yola is thrilled to start heading home. She knows her parents are going to be thrilled to see her. Norn! Norn, where are you? Remember that the, the tall manservant um, comes in from the back room. Hands are, are dirty and Boots are, are muddy. He just comes in walking in, brushes his hands off on his trousers, and like, just nods at Winston. Doesn't even say a word. Ah, there you are. Uh, are, are we ready? He just nods quietly. Good, good. Uh, look over this young one. Uh, make sure he's okay, yeah? And with that, Norn just walks over to Fen, and, and as he did the night before, just very brusquely, like, Horrible, horrible bedside manner. Just kind of tilts your head back, pulls open one of your eyes, like to look at it, and turns your head to the side, roughly. Like, mm, he's fine. Huh. If you say so. Mm -hmm. mm, you'll be alright. <clears throat> and with that, uh, everyone gets put together and. Latching the door behind them, everyone heads back off to the long walk back to White Coast. Hata! And yay verily. It's a good hour to walk. Um, you weren't particularly close to White Coast. Um, if there's anything anyone wants to do on the way, feel free to let me know, or otherwise we'll just kind of fast forward a little bit. Quick in terror of the... Uh repercussions of being gone all night with no warning for our parents as you're invariably going to be like talking about this and it's like oh I hope mom's okay we're okay and I hope she doesn't punish us too much and whatnot. Winston just kind of chimes in chatting with Dorn with a stage whisper overheard and just starts discussing some of the, the old punishments that he used to receive as a kid in a much earlier time Jesus involving Christ. paddles and you know, <coughs> holding pails and, and having to muck out the stables for a full week and all the imaginative things he can think of. That sounds miserable. Why does he subject us to this? Because it's, it's, amu it's amusing to him. You can, de you can definitely hear the, the joking laughter in his voice. It doesn't stop the thoughts from creeping in. Exactly. Yeah, you guys make yourself... Make your way back. I'm gonna back transition us just for... Scenery's sake. 
because it took me a long ass time to make this and I want to show it off. Excellent. It looks very nice. What a lovely town. The the things in the top right are all fields for farming, right? Correct. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Sure. So, uh, you guys are coming in from the southeast through the town. Um, now, you guys are all looking very much worse for wear. Because between the fight with the scorpion, scrambling over rocks, sludging through a uh, hurricane winds with debris flying around, like your clothes are tattered, like you're really looking pretty worse for wear. We're worse and we're wear. I probably should have cleaned my armor. So as you were walking through, some um, remind me, you guys had all decided you were all keep kids, correct? Right. Yes. Uh, I was from the town, but I'm working in the keep. Okay, cool. So that still counts as far as, you know, playing, uh, what is it, fucking... Rag, rag ball. Yeah. Rag ball, that's what it was. All right. Um, so yeah, you're walking through. Uh, Yola... You probably, uh, do you want to hang out with your friends or do you want to slip off to your parents' folks? Parents I'm going to slip off to, to check in with the parents. You know, I'm a good daughter. All right. So we'll... I love my mom and dad. <laughs> All right, so we'll, we'll focus on you for a moment. Okay. I love me. Focusing me on is my favorite part of the day. Oh, maybe not this time. Damn it. So uh, as you split off, your, your friends give you a, a bit of a camaraderie uh what's the word i'm looking for good luck sympathetic look sympathetic <laughs> It'll be okay yes we'll get through this together guys <laughs> all right um would you like to describe your household or would you like me to make it up oh describe my household tell me about my parents so your parents both your mother and father um are bakers mm -hmm. cooks your mother as you had described is a little superstitious not very fond of anything reeking of of magic or sorcery or, or devils and brimstone your father's a little more down to earth very aff affable fellow quick to laughter a little overweight as most cooks tend to be Uh, your folks live above a bread store. Bakery. <laughs> store, jeez. A bakery. I um, love the bread store. <laughs> <laughs> there were stores dedicated to bread before. Listen, I gotta go head down to the bread store. I'll be right back, guys. Someone's gotta bring home the bread. Um, it's well kept. Uh, your mother especially is very fastidious about sweeping the stoop every morning, making sure that the uh, the windows are cleaned and washed, no muck or dust. Basically trying to be in an extremely presentable form at all times. Um, there's uh, various wares on display uh, by the windows. It's a two-story, as again, your parents live above it. And there's always a constant um, stream of smoke coming from the chimney. Is it because there's always something on the fire, like tea? Um, it's it's a bakery. Something's always cooking. Next. You definitely recognize the smell of home before you see home. Perfect. My tummy grumbles. I need honey bread. I need sweet honey buns. Yeah, we have had breakfast yet. Uh, so once I start smelling home, I pick up my pace. I, you know, do the little trot. And I do kind of like the, the trot, run, settle down into a walk, trot, run, settle down into a walk thing. Jogging, All yes. the way to my door. <laughs> yes, but very irregular speed. <laughs> okay. Um, all the way to my door. And when I get to it, I 
kind of tentatively kind of push it open and I peek in with one eye. As you do, um, you see your um, your mother is at the counter talking with a customer or bagging some baguettes. Um, she They're spot- baguettes, you fucking pleb. My world, I'll call what I want. Um, bagels then, okay. Um, bagels, you mean? Rocks fall, man. Rocks fall. <laughs> Do you want me to hit him? I'll hit him. I will hit him over the bagel issue. So your mother is uh, packaging some products for a customer. Mm-hmm. And uh, she spots you immediately. Um, initially, God damn it. Initially, the... Oh, are you trying to sneak in? Uh, I'm trying to peer in before anyone notices me so I can get a gauge on if, whether or not people are angry at me. Okay, so that sounds pretty stealthy to me. So why don't you go ahead and roll a stealth check? Okay. Uh, um, what's my modifier? On that? Should roll properly. Okay, you managed to go in unnoticed. Oh no, I'm just peeking. I'm not I've not walked in yet. I'm just okay. peeking. Okay. You're able to crack um, the door open and because you live here, you know that there's a small bell above the door that goes off whenever someone opens it. But you've learned through the years of being a kid that if you open the door really slowly, you can avoid it from actually ringing. Perfect. All right, uh, I'm going to wait until... Is there is there multiple customers in there, or just the one? Apparently, there's just the one uh, dowdy-looking uh, woman, about the same age okay. as your mother. I kind of slide back out and just kind of hang out at the front, and I'm going to wait to go in until after that customer is gone. Okay. Um, in less than a minute, um, you hear her, you know, giving her partings, and... Uh, I don't know... Good luck now. I hope I hope your daughter's okay. Best and wishes. As, as soon as she's out, I'm gonna whisk right in past her. It's probably right past her knees. Let's be real here. I'm tiny. Um, and like literally, just as soon as she's opened the door, I'm right in. I just didn't want mom to make a scene in front of a customer. She hates that. <laughs> <laughs> As as your mother is, you know, waving, raising her hand, waving goodbye and whatnot, and you slip in right behind the the, the other customer, uh, she just uh, she lowers her hand from greeting and just immediately places it on her hip, and she just locks you in the mom stare. Hi, mom. Don't you hi, mom me? Where have you been? I've been worried sick. I was ready to call the guards out to come looking for you. Well, Mom, let me tell you. Oh, well, you better you tell me. What happened was we were looking after the kids. And then the older girl, B, she came down and told us that uh, the other kid's mom said that we had to go and fetch crabs from the place down by the cliffs, and so we had to go do that, and then we ran into this really big scorpion thing, and she's she's still got one of the claws, I think. She's gonna shake this claw around very proudly. And see, we had to kill the thing. See, this is a really big claw. The thing we killed, it was really big. It was black claw, totally. Um, but then the rain started to come, and we had to clamber up the cliffs, but we didn't want to lose all the meat from the claws, and she shakes around the claw again, as if to prove that her story is real. Uh, and so we had to use ropes and stuff. I was a very good climber, by the way. I just thought you should know that. I think I saved some lives. Um, also, and then it got raining really bad. And then there was like this wild boar. And I think one of our friends got poisoned by the big scorpion, but I'm not really sure. Oh, but yeah, the boar, it was bad. And then this other guy, he was a grown up. He came out from the from behind the trees and he killed the boar. I think it was his boar. And then we went over to the wizard's house because it was too rainy to get home. Are you quite finished? Yes, thank you. Well, don't thank me yet. I've had about enough of your fibbing. Black Claw. Oh, I'll never. 
she once again shakes around the uh, the claw in her hand. Look! <laughs> what is that dirty thing? Don't bring that into the shop. But, but get it out! Get it out! But but I have outside to with it right now. Don't you talk back to me, young miss. She rolls her eyes and goes and sets it outside the door. Oh, you look filthy. It was raining. You get right upstairs and get a bath. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and on the way upstairs, I'm gonna grab a bun off the counter. Uh, that's that's rather. Just get upstairs. <laughs> we'll have words later. Yes, wait, ma'am. Wait till your father gets home. I'll go run myself a bath. Yeah. And with that, we'll cut back over to the rest of the group. What would everyone else like to do? Well, I was supposed to bring some crabs back to my uh, my family. Right. I would help him bring the uh, claws. Yep, so Thane and Cassidy, you're both in residence with the, uh, the uh, chief scullery matron are we i thought term. her dad was a blacksmith or her oh fucking no, yes you're, you're right you're right you're totally right getting my characters mixed up sorry wow it is only the I second session it's okay uh but yeah i mean thane will gladly take assistance carting this big fucking claw off to his mom <clears throat> because then he has backup for proving that this happened and he didn't make it up okay so as far as the claws go, I thought you guys left those on the rocky shore. No, no. definitely not. We have intentionally held them around this entire time. Okay, yeah, so, yeah. We so Yola has one the and you have the other. The road. So Yola has one and you have the other? Yes. Except that she just put one outside, so I would have grabbed it. That's me. Well, no, I she thought went... that I yield out to go to my house. Yeah, we all split oh, okay. up. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've just got the one. Okay. Um, so yeah, um, you head over to the the kitchens. Uh, do you go in the, you know, just walk right in or? Yeah, I mean we'll go we'll go the servant route and like we'll go through the main hall area. But yes, we uh, Thane is not trying to be stealthy at all. He's okay. just like, oh man, I got to see my mom. She's gonna kill me if she doesn't see me soon. I gotta show her this thing and explain why I was gone, otherwise I'm dead. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Alright, so you slip in the, the back supply door. Uh, it's like a big warehouse, uh, like a loading gate almost. Like it's expected for a, a wagon drawn carriage to, to back into it to help offload things. After all, it's serving enough food for the, uh, the entire castle. Or, not really a castle, just a keep really. But uh, in any case, you slip in the back there. There's plenty of uh, workers uh, who all recognize you. It's kind of like a second family almost. Um, several of the, the scullery maids, um, some early 20s, late teens, a bit of mixed. Uh, they, they look at you and, and wave friendly with an open smile. Um, say, oh, thank God you're, you're back. Oh, welcome back. Oh, your mother's been looking for you. They <laughs> gladly waves back to them and, and says hello. And is like, oh, man, I got the greatest story to tell you all later. Don't you worry. We'll get back to you as soon as I see my mom. <laughs> Good luck. Oh. Th thanks. Thanks. Um, yeah, so if you're heading straight into the kitchen looking for mom or you want to. Like yes. No, we're making a beeline for mom. Gotcha. All right, so you find her as you expect, um, working diligently in the kitchen. Um, from growing up here, you know, like one one of the cardinal sins of the scullery is to get underfoot. Don't get in mom's way. Don't get in front of the the head cook's way. Oh, I'd be sitting right at the entrance of the door into the kitchen, holding this claw. Oh yeah, no. Uh, Thane, Thane goes right in, but he knows better than to like roll up right up on mom when she's in the middle of cooking stuff. All right. So, you, are you going in with your friends or just by yourself at this point? 
Yeah. No, no, he'll go in uh, with Cassidy, but he will. I, I mean, I guess if she stops by the door, he'll keep going straight on in, and like quickly wash up and start to to helping uh, cook, as he says. Hi, I have a lot of explaining to do, I'm aware. Oh, well, th- well, that's okay, honey. Uh, you're okay, I hope. And she just walks over and pats you down, like looking you up and over. It's like, oh, you're you're, you're okay? You're not hurt? No, I mean, oh, I'm, I'm, I guess sick. a couple of scratches here and there, but I'm okay. Oh, I, well, I hope those don't get infected. Come, come, no, no, let's no. get you cleaned up. Magar! Bane's back! And you just hear a, a non-committal grunt from behind one <laughs> of the, the stoves. Sounds about right. Uh, about time. Yeah, we kind of got caught up with some stuff. I, we, I didn't just up and disappear, though. We went to go get those crabs, and let me tell you, there was a big... Squ- it was Black Claw, actually. I'm pretty sure it was Black Claw. Oh, holding because, up a hand I mean, to forestall the, the flood of storytelling. Um, a very large, gruff-looking man, barrel-chested with a, a, a well-stained apron over his front. Um, clean shaven he stares down at you like he's easily like a good foot or two above you and he just looks down he's like hmm. you okay son yeah I'm, I'm doing okay all right you get go go get cleaned up the kitchen ain't no place for mud we'll yeah okay later. that's true all right okay well I'll, I'll go get cleaned up and I'll come back all right. as you're heading out the door to your rooms, presumably. Mm-hmm. Uh, he just calls out, it's like, hmm, Thane! Yeah, Dad. Just gives you, like, one of those head nods. Glad you're okay. Thanks, Dad. Mm. Well, I'll just leave this right here, then. And, uh, Dane will go ahead and take it with him so that he can also clean the claw and it's not just some gross-ass claw we've been cr- carting around for a day and a half now. <laughs> But he will say thanks and, you know, <laughs> give you a, a quick hug and then say, all right, you, you should probably get home, too. All right. All right. So Thane and Yola, you're taken care of. Uh, that leaves Cassidy, Fen, and Cade. Cassidy, uh, let's see. Thane, did you bring the claw with you or did you leave it with Cassidy? No, no, no. I brought it with me. Okay. Because, you know, kitchen, we have to cook it here. All right. So Cassidy and Cade, you've got a, a sickly looking Fen kind of hanging out behind, by you. You're just sitting on uh, a few barrels that are outside the, the kitchen doorway there. Yeah, um, I will help make sure that uh, Fen gets home. All right. Kate will help as well. Uh, yeah. Fen will probably give like some of the most confusing directions, like he's almost intentionally delaying the inevitable. Which the your two friends find very comical, almost, in that they very much well know where you live. You no, know, guys, it. it's the third left. Right. Come on, we just walked right by it. Bruh, we know. <laughs> Come on, Ben. If you're not feeling well, you need to go lay down. Uh, do, I, do I really have to? Look, he'll just be happy that you're okay. Come on. He's gonna just limp along with them. All right, you guys work yourselves down towards uh, the docks um, to a very serviceable looking storefront. Um, It's not really a a goods store so much as uh, an entryway for a, a service business. Ding dong. Hold on. Hold up here. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right. Um, so, Fen, uh, as you half expected, your father is not at home. Uh, he is probably uh, at his shop uh, down by the docks, uh, the workshop, so to speak, as he is a carpenter. And he doesn't work on that, you know, at home. Um, 
your... Yet, there always seems to be the stench of, uh, of wood chips. Yeah, sawdust is just a, a way of life for your family. Like, it gets everywhere, it's coating everything. You constantly smell like maple and oak. It's actually a reassuring smell, like you know your home. Yeah. Um, your mother actually doesn't seem to be home either. Oh, you got off easy. And just <laughs> breathes a big sigh of relief. And then he realizes, wait, that means she's not here to take care of me. Uh... I want my mommy. <laughs> Pretty much. There's no one home. To, there's no one home to fix you some hot soup or to tuck you in or make sure you get a hot bath. Look, Ben, go take a shower, bath, whatever. Get cleaned up and go to bed. All right. I'll see you guys later. Once I'm oh, not feeling like one this. Of the pages to find your parents. Tell them that you're home. Alright, thanks. Um, uh, I would also like to point out that I grabbed some uh, scraps of food to uh, feed my new acquaintance. You're so lucky, Finn. We'll see you later. Alright, see you later. Well, Cage, you're next! Ah, you can go. I think I'm gonna just hang around town for a little bit. Scared? Never scared. Just, uh, wise. <laughs> Cade, instead of expecting a, you know, wrathful parents, you're probably more worried about being smothered to death. Alright. As your parents are extremely overprotective, and you are their special little godling. Oh god. Come on, kid. It's it's really uncomfortable. I don't want you to see this. As a, a slight flush of embarrassment creeps onto your cheeks. The, the, the funny thing is, I'm probably a little bit jealous of him because my parents are the, the exact opposite. Hey, get, grass is always greener. Yeah. So, Cade, you're just chilling around town? Yeah, then he'll eventually, after he, he wastes a little more time, he'll go and face the music. Anything in particular that you'd be occupying yourself with? It's about noontime right now. Uh, he would probably find, like, a, a food stand or something around there and just cop a squat nearby and just uh, mindlessly munch and think about what happened before and um, how fantastic it was to actually get into his first uh, dangerous fight okay so you head off to the the market square that's that central tented area and you just kind of like wander around it's kind of like a you know street fair kind of situation a few people yeah, probably sit at the fountain. go ahead they'll probably sit at the fountain and just watch people all right it's not an unusual occurrence several other people are sitting there enjoying a, a luncheon as well uh, it's a common locale. But a couple people will pass by and, and nod their head in acknowledgement. Uh, Kyrsus is a, excuse me, uh, White Coast is a small enough town that everyone kind of knows each other, even if not personally. They'll recognize each other. Um, we'll third party it in just a little bit. Um, when you do eventually get home, your parents uh, are both extremely extremely concerned over your safety well-being and they give you the once over make sure you get a bath um like your mom like even kind of walks in on you to, to check to make sure you don't have any cuts or wash your hair make sure you scrub your back and it's just really get out, mom. mortifying okay that's kind of creepy just a little and uh you know they're just smothering you and, and it's like oh I, I knew this wouldn't I knew this would be a bad idea those friends of yours are a bad influence nah they're fine 
Oh, well, maybe we should just find you a, a a nice safe position inside the keep. Maybe uh, uh, ch changing bed linens or, or something like that. Well, Father James will know best. Let's ask him. Oh yes, Father Father James. He'll he'll know what's best. Don't worry, Mom. It'll be okay. Well, no, 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 you go, uh, you know, get cleaned up, and I'll fix your bed all nice and, and warm, and make sure I put some heating coals under there so you're all warm and toasty, and I'll fix you your favorite soup. How's that sound, honey? That sounds wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh, and, and don't forget, we love you very much, and you're very special. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's like he's, uh, he's used to this now, and... It's almost like he's on autopilot in saying this. Like, yes, Mom. Uh-huh. I love you too, Mom. <laughs> he's not even thinking about saying it. It's just kind of coming out that way. Right. And Cassidy. Yeah, I'm just going to head right to the... Uh, well, first I'm going to find a page to go and summon Fen's parents. Let them know that he had a bit of a poisoning scare. All oh, everything's fine. He's okay. He just needs to rest. He's home. Okay, I missed the first part of that. You're gonna find what? A page to go find Ben's parents. Oh, you definitely do not rank finding a page to do your work for you. Not even like a young kid that I can just be like, hey, go do this for me. You can find a young kid. Um, you're gonna have to convince him. Hey, you! What are you doing? Why do you care? None of your I business. Need you to, I need you to do something for me. And what's in it for me? You get to do something other than sit there and do nothing? <laughs> Shove off. Fine, fine. Here, two gold. I'm shocked that you didn't turn around and go, boy, I will whoop your ass if you don't yeah, do this for that too. I'm a little <laughs> tired, okay? <laughs> Remember, you are the intimidation machine over here. I know. <laughs> I know. All right, it's so also you, a little kid. So you pass over two gold coins, which is... Uh, economy and Pathfinder is all fucked up. We'll assume that that is a small amount for even ch even these even chillins. Um, I mean, it's probably a lot for a little kid, but for us, it's probably a normal amount. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like the economy is really screwed up. So you hand over what's approximately the equivalent of like five bucks. Right. It's like, uh, all right, fine. What is it? Better not be too long. Man, I, I got know. things to do. And I'll give him the instructions to go find Finn's parents, where they're at, what to tell them. Alright, got it. So find the cop and tell him his kid's home and everything's perfectly fine. Nothing to worry about. Gotcha. Uh, uh, wait, no, no, hold and on. And he goes running off. Uh... Oh well. Alright, off to the blacksmith. All right. Because I'm pretty sure my foster father's not home. Right. It's probably at the smithy. Yep. So your your father's blacksmith is actually in the keep itself. Um, just to describe it, because I know the illustration can't always be super obvious. Those uh, fields with like the brown tick marks in the middle. Those are training fields for the local militia. Mm -hmm. The two larger of buildings flanking the path are the barracks. The smaller buildings along the south end of the keep are um, essentially servants' quarters and you know local residents and whatnot. Uh, the building off by itself on the top right is the, uh, the duchy's, uh, the duke's family chapel. Okay. Which is where um, Priest James, that uh, Kate is uh, spending time with, that's that's his area, so to speak. And the the blue squarish thing is uh, Winston's tower. 
Okay. Uh, your father is in the smithy, which is down here in the southwest. All right. Your actual will... quarters are in the keep itself, but they are not adjoined to the smithy. Okay. I'll head to the smithy. And when I get there, I make sure that, like, I'm standing off to the side, but within his line of sight, so I don't <laughs> spook him. Yep. Hi, sister and friends. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm sorry, I missed the, the first part. Where Where is the kitchen? Is it like in the actual keep in here? Yeah, so... And, uh, at? Sure, so the... Um, so the larger buildings here are barracks. Okay. The local garrison. Uh, These white tan are chaining yards. Got it. It's supposed to be like stickets with figures and all that. Uh -huh. The collection of housing along the outside is just, you know, servants' quarters, uh, other residents of the keep other than the actual ducal family. Inside okay. the keep itself is a collection of, you know, the actual, you know, the hall, the, the ducal family quarters, all the various pieces of a keep. Uh, they go along with that. You know, audience chambers and servants' quarters, things like that. Mm -hmm. Church, chapel, run by Father James. Okay. Mage Tower, run by Winston. Right. Smithy. And, you know, despite what the image looks like, there's probably a good collection of smaller buildings throughout. Right, of course. Is there a second... Um church like down in here there is yes is that i assumed that was okay yeah gotcha there's the duke family chapel which is what is up in the keep and then there's the more you know the town centric house of worship with you know multiple gods in resident and whatnot okay uh so cassidy as you're you're standing on this off on the side um, are you trying to get your father's attention, or are you just waiting patiently? Uh, waiting patiently, because you never want to try to distract the study at work. Okay. Um, you know, you're not alone in the smithy. It's not just your father, of course. There's a number of other uh, apprentices, journeymen, um, you know, general workers, you know, bellow workers, things like that. They all. Uh, give you a respectful nod and get back to their work. They're, it's not, you can't really have a conversation in the middle of a smithy. Like it just doesn't work. Right. Um, you know, after some time, a, a good solid, you know, half an hour really of just waiting for your father to finish working on working the piece of metal that he is. Um, you see him eh, probably watching studiously actually, as he's, uh, transforming, a. A wrought iron bar into uh, slotting into holes in the anvil and just pounding them into large uh, half inch, uh, excuse me, you know, nails, uh, rails, and whatnot, horseshoes. Basically, getting every little bit of use after that rod of iron. Eventually, he steps back, you know, wiping sweat off his brow, a heavy leather apron over his chest, and um, very, uh, honestly, a, a hairy gentleman. Very um, thick, muscled arms, barrel-chested. Very imposing-looking figure. And he finally, you know, steps back. Um, there's a, a quenching barrel next to the smithy. And you just see him uh, place both hands on the rim and just dunk his head into it. Splashing his hair back. He turns to you and finally notices you standing there and it's like hmm. nods over to the bellows next to the forge position that you're well familiar with yep I will take off my armor put it in the little pile at the corner of the smithy where it won't get in someone's way and get to work alright as you uh, take the armor off and, and put it aside, uh, he uh, snaps at, snaps his fingers at you and just does like the bring it over here gesture. I and bring it to him. 
takes a look at your armor, looking at the dents and the scrapes from the scorpion that really did a number on it. And he just looks over at you and shakes his head like, you know, not taking good care of good workmanship. And uh, he actually steps aside from the anvil and hands you the hammer. Like, show me what if show me that you've been learning what I've been teaching you. All right, I will get to work to repairing my gear. Okay, if you I don't recall, but if you have a lore towards this, feel free to roll that. Oh. If not, roll a generic craft check. Was this intelligence based? I grab Profession Smith. Okay, so okay. go ahead and use that. Okay, much to your father's grudging uh, satisfaction, over the period of a solid hour, uh, standing in front of the uh, the inferno of the forge and reheating the, the metal and <clears throat> hammering out the dents and buffing the scratches out and whatnot, um, it took you longer than he would have done it by a fair bit. Mm -hmm. But you do a serviceable job on it. And he seems to be uh, somewhat... Uh, like it softened it for him a bit. Like you're, he's not quite as pissed with you as he would have been. Yeah. All right, and af as that, you know, again, without a word, he just uh, nods his head off to the side towards the, the house and points over there and just uh, splashes you with uh, a bit of the dousing water. Like, get cleaned up. Alright. I'll give him a smile, grab my stuff, and head home. Alright. And with that, um, everyone has made it home successfully. No one is permanently scarred by their parents or anyone is in too much trouble. Some of you find yourselves grounded, curtailed for a few days. But overall, um, yeah, everyone is doing okay. All the your, your comrades and peer group are you have all their ears as you all collectively telling them over the story. Maybe some exaggeration gets mixed in there. But uh, several weeks have passed. And everything's kind of blown over. It's old, sto old news at this point. As, you know, attention span of young people tends to be. It's like, oh, that's so last week. Uh, is there anything in particular that anyone would like to do in this time period? Uh, I mean, do you have options for us? Like, things that we could do? So, uh, in the time span, um, normally you would be continuing to learn your crafts. Um, you might spend some more recreation time. You might get to know someone more, or... Um, Whatever you can think of to come up with that you wanted to get done, maybe do something with those claws. Uh, Fen, if you want to find out more about that stinger or like try to make an actual trophy out of it, so to speak, or if it just gets tucked away in a drawer. Yeah, I was actually going to like go to the alchemist, see if he couldn't do something to it. Okay. Uh, in the adjoining weeks, uh, you talk to... It's not really an alchemist, so to speak, as much as like a hedge witch, hedge wizard... Kind of like a generic low-tech pharmacy kind of situation. So lots of home remedies and homeopathic stuff, and there's a few legit potions in play. Lots of like low-level, level one type stuff. It seems to be extremely common throughout uh, the, the land. It's it's not surprising or rare to see it. Um, what exactly would you like them to do? Uh, if possible, extract the venom. If not, then just uh, render the stinger in there. Okay. Um, the venom uh, itself, over you know, several weeks' time, uh, will lose its potency on its own. And the alchemist will certainly tell you that, that it's only good for you know, a, a day or two once, the, once it's dead. 
uh, unless it's you know preserved carefully and especially prepared ways you know you have to extract the venom you know boil it down concentrate it that sort of thing is that something that you want to do or just keep it as a keepsake just keep it as a keepsake okay so you you work out a deal with the alchemist um where he gets to keep the extracted venom which can be used for antitoxin and other medicinal purposes uh in return he uh you know, safely returns the stinger to you, um, now perfectly safe to handle. Uh, and as a, a extra favor, he, he uh, has managed to drill a small hole in the base of it that you could potentially run a thin chain through if you're so inclined. I am definitely inclined. I was thinking about that before you even said it. Okay. Um... Just for pure flavor purposes, do you picture a leather thong, a chain, anything special? Right around the neck, or around the hip? What do you want to do? Uh, around the neck. Uh, just like, it doesn't even have to be a chain, just some leather cord or something like that. Okay. Or rope. So yeah, you, you string a, a leather thong through it and wear it as a necklace. Uh, your, your mother is not too terribly happy about it, but your father thinks it's totally cool. And he just gives you like a... When he sees you coming home with this thing around your neck, because you're, you know, you're wearing it out in the open, probably very proud of it. He yeah. just gives you like a knowing look. It's like, yeah, I used to wear stuff like that too when I was a kid. But your mother just shakes her head. It's like, oh, the ugly thing. Wearing the ass of some critter around your neck. Oof. I wish you'd get rid of that thing. Uh, Fen would probably do his best to explain to her that it's a trophy, that it's a trophy for, you know, his glorious victory, but she probably wouldn't understand. <sighs> glorious victory? You mean the thing that almost killed you? My poor son. What will I ever do? Almost. Well, at least you're not in prison yet. Fen just kind of rolls his eyes. Take my blessings where I can find them, I suppose. Um, yeah, and your your father, aside from the you know the head nod or whatever, is is actually almost dismissive about it. Like he's got more important things to worry about than some jewelry his kid brought home. Mostly just muttering about you know some furniture order that came in that he's super stressed that has to deal with and annoying customers and things like that. Um, but yeah, so several weeks have passed, probably almost a month actually, and uh, the town is all a hubbub as the Festival of Calling approaches rapidly. The entire duchy is in a furor trying to prepare for this annual festival. The kitchens are ablaze with constant cooking of sweet meats and special breads and um, many traders have rolled into town parting uh, entire huge wagon sized kegs of ale and a bunch of glee men and jugglers and musicians and bards have all kind of swarmed upon the duchy. The market square, which is normally filled with uh, stalls and small tables with odds and ends that people are trying to sell and home crafts and whatnot, has largely been cleared out to make room for all these uh, visitors and performers. Keep itself is swarming with servants trying to prepare guest rooms. And, you know, everyone's basically just in a mad dash to get everything done in time. Uh, all collectively, you've been put to work like you've never been put to work before, as everyone's trying to rush to get everything done. And your parents, um, some with more fervor than other, are trying to get you all dressed up in your, your best clothes, taking them in, 
all your your Sunday finest, so to speak. Some of them are more finer than others. And uh, one of the things that all are being drilled into your heads is the allegiance oath that you'll be expected to recite once called. And all your parents are reminding you. Now remember, repeat with me, I promise on my faith that I will be true to the Duke of White Coast, and in turn, the kingdom whole of Kyrsus. Never cause him or his harm, and will observe my homage to him completely, in good faith and without deceit. You're all. I prom promise. Uh. White Coast, um, King Kyrsus, faithful. Oh, honey, even pay attention. I wouldn't do to make a mockery of us. As I forget the actual Give me the last part on. again. Now, if you get your head out of the clouds and listen, I promise on my faith that I will be true to the Duke of White Coast, and in turn, the kingdom whole of Kyrsus. Never cause him or his harm, and will observe my homage to him completely, in good faith and without deceit. You just see Yola trying to scribble the shit down on the inside of her wrist. <laughs> That's a oh, whole lot to fit on a small wrist. She's trying. No one said it's gonna be good. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is this is drilled into your heads. Um, it has been for the last several days. This is nothing new. Um, this is something that all the children of your age have been waiting for all year. Uh, like this is the the epitome of coming to age celebration and like <laughs> the signet. Signifying that you are now young adults and not just kids. So naturally, it's something you're all looking very much forward to. So you're going to put this in text for us, right? Or do you expect us to remember this? Hmm. <laughs> we'll see. Um, I, so I would just like to say that Finn would probably write it on a piece of parchment and hide it uh, <laughs> on it, like on his wrist. Crib, crib for... sheets. Yola's yeah. hiking up her skirt, and she's like, all right, all right, the last part, Mom, the last part again. <laughs> You're running out of body parts? She's running out of body parts. She needs the last part again, Mom. <laughs> uh, one last time. I promise on my faith that I will be true to the Duke of White Coast, and in turn, the kingdom whole of Kyrsus, never cause him or his harm and will observe my homage to him completely, in good faith and without deceit. Now again, as this has been repeated to you over the last several days, and the fussing over outfits and you know, told how to behave and what's going to happen and all that, has been drilled into your minds over the last several days. This is nothing new to you, and as young adults, it's probably very wearisome. Like, all right, all right, I got it. More on your mind, however, is the traditional morning ragball game. The championships between the keep kids and the town kids has culminated in a deciding bout tied to date. And this game, above all other games, even despite this festival, will decide for the year who is victor. Now, I don't have anything mechanical set up for this. This is theater of mind. I'm just going to let you guys roll raw d20s and oh, describe any particular plays or strategies that you might wish to come up with before the game. So think, think soccer. Okay. <laughs> So it's blood pig. 
Basically blood pig, yes. But with oh. their feet? Um, yeah, I didn't really think the rules through or anything. Like I said, it's not really a mechanical thing. Um, probably closer to like a rugby or like ultimate frisbee kind of situation. Rugby, you say? It, I will tell you, I will describe the game as this. It is an extremely rough and tumble game where it's not uncommon for the rules to kind of sort of be made up on the spot or only kind of loosely sort of followed. Um, it is almost unheard of for a ragball game to not erupt into some kind of fight or brawl at some point. It's kind of like old school hockey matches. Fighting is like part of the game almost. Excellent. All right. So. So I'll get, I'm gonna I'm gonna step away for a few minutes because I actually need to step up anyway. Okay. Over the we'll reconvene at nine fifty. That's ten minutes from now. Okay. I'll give you guys the next ten minutes uh, off stream to figure out uh, what it is that you might want to come up with. All right. And for everyone viewing, we will be right back in 10 minutes. And we'll see what they come up with. Wraith. Bob. Attack. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear God. So technically that would be a charge when you're falling from above. <laughs> yeah, I'll allow it. It's oh fine. Oh, my God. Oh. Uh, Bob, in a fit of suicidal rage, just dives into the pit head first. That should be a plus two. So for I don't the know what to charge. In that. So that's plus two yeah, on the charge. Just, yeah, it's just charge plus two. Uh, it hits. <laughs> now there's the Wait, question. Hold on. Now there's the, the question take, of falling damage. Yeah, doesn't the thing take falling damage equal to an object of its of the rhinoceros' size? Uh, it's the difference between like an object versus a character. The rules, as written, are assigned to like normal, medium-sized characters falling, and it technically is a charge attack. Hmm. There isn't anything about falling damage for characters like that, so we can play it out however you want. How much does a rhino weigh? I just I, in my uh... I I'm just I'm just going to say this before the ship might turn. Rule it how you want it to be ruled. Do you want it to be falling damage? Do you want it to be damage per weight? <laughs> um, I feel like the damage per weight... Uh, let me ask you this, though. Are you going to call this a bludgeoning attack if it's damage by weight, or is this environmental He's damage? going in face first. This is piercing. True. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm giving it piercing. Okay, I would, I would think... say go by a white rhino's weight. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Well, I don't know if that's the wisest idea, because if this ship mine decides to crawl out of here and throw the rhino back at us, we might be <laughs> running into issues, my friend. I don't think your rhino is going to so one-shot this I, thing and make I, it so I, we're unable. I also don't think the rhino's going to survive this, because it takes just right. as much damage as it deals. Oh yeah, okay, that's yeah, true. This is a one-way trip. Fair enough. So the rhino takes and up. deals 75 damage. <laughs> nice. Awesome. <laughs> Oh, Bob, you're a fucking legend. And this pace starts getting faster and faster. Crazy car alarms. And click, everything. clack, click, clack, click, clack. And you can see that uh, there's many different gears that you didn't recognize immediately. And uh, it's like a clockwork. Just an amazing um, display of moving parts in various places. Either the wretched thing is having a fit, or it's trying to communicate. So all that noise is coming from this creature? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> As Jane Moore says that, it says, click, clack, click. Oh, we, we know your language. Click the zing. We were part of the Great March. Clack, clack. We were separated. Cling, cling, zing. We were lost. Zing! You're way too much fun with that mic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so a after probably like an hour of this, of you know, berailing the the patrons with mostly accurate 
uh, tales of his most recent adventures and the massive, massive battle and how he fought this this strange, you know, the ancient hero to a standstill and matched his skills thrust for thrust. Emphasizing thrust for thrust. <laughs> and with the sword nagging him and nagging him and nagging him. He'll he'll step away for a second, you know, making his excuses to, you know, head to the water closet or, or whatever the outhouse is, equivalent is in this era. <laughs> and he pulls the sword out a little bit. And I said, now, now, now you listen here. Now we, we need to come to an understanding here. Now it's all fine and dandy to be heroic and do great deeds and, and win the day, but a man has got to relax. And relax you can, with a few beers and... Definitely with no googly-eyed floozies. Oh, if you have time you... for that, you have time for me. You could swing me around. Uh, are, are you jealous? <laughs> of the very idea. I think you are. So I'm spending some attention with the pretty ladies over there instead of wielding you. I'm simply thinking about the best course of action from here, and that does not involve fooling around with women. Yeah, well, Aldarian that... tried that a few times, and I quickly taught him out of that. Well, if you take it from me as something of an expert, I imagine that they might enjoy my weapon a little more than yours. I mean try as you might, we can see about that. Now this is just the way I am and this ain't gonna change, so you best get used to the idea. And I'm saying that poor habits do not maketh man. You and I have a much different opinion of poor habits. How long you been traveling around the realms? Time has changed, my friend. Times may have changed, but true swordsmanship has not. We ain't talking about swordsmanship here. We're talking about handling my weapon. And I'm saying you don't have to handle your weapon this way. Rigorous training, dedication, practice, that's all you need. And that's exactly what I'm trying to get with the ladies. And I'm telling you, you don't need to focus your attention there if you wish to be truly great. Think of it this way. And she'll just kind of, she'll pause for a moment. You kind of hear this like, mm, uh, think, think of it like this. If you do not lay as many women, they will be pining for you. You'll have mountains of women because they all want to be the one that gets to Thalen. But that's not- You gotta build up the tail first. Um, I can't believe it. I'm getting relationship advice from a sword. But the heart of the matter is that you shouldn't go fooling around with girls and fooling their hearts and telling them this way and that. It is a liar's path and I will not have it. Yeah, well, you're gonna have to get used to it, because that's just how I am. And that ain't gonna change. So I'm gonna put you back in your sheath now and we'll talk in the morning. <laughs> Her. Very well. Uh, so Thalen, when do you finally get around to it? Make me a will save. Don't forget, I'm sure you want to use charm to life on this. 
Yeah, I'm probably <laughs> going to. <laughs> yeah, I'm using term life on this. <laughs> oh my god! Hey. Uh, where the hell is that thing? Oh, um, it's just static. Uh, term life. Charisma to savings, uh, plus two, so an 18. Uh, so you're getting ready. You found this really, like, 8 out of 10 woman. She's curvy in all the right places. Oh, better, better than my usual standard. Um, and just, it, she promises a real nice, relaxing evening, but as you kind of get your pants down, you, just, you can't get it up. Nice bike. <laughs> no, 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 don't, don't, don't worry. Just had a little too much to drink. That's all. Just give me a minute. She'll just, she'll wait a bit. Don't, but no matter like how, no matter how much you rub it or massage it this way and that, oh, oh God. um, doing all the Thalen <laughs> patented techniques, it just won't work. And it's like, um. You know, if this is a bad time, I can just go home. No, no, no. No, it, this, this, this isn't a problem. And without diving into too many mechanical details here, uh, there's more than one way to skin a cat, as it were. Okay. Let it never be said that Thalen didn't do his best to do his duty. Uh, make another will save. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> certain, certain parts that are normal. And welcome back, as our players have uh, come up with some interesting things. Interesting things, yes. I am writing early in the morning at the break of dawn. Yo mama, yo town mama is so fat that I thought of them and they broke my neck. They were so heavy. In Arcane Mark, so that it's never removable. <laughs> That's going to garner a lot of whispers from the town folk and, and like, pointing and, like, you just might say a few uh, of the more... Yes, but no one will know it's me. There. No, that's true. You'll see a few people making, like, an odd sign on their forehead, like, warding off evil. <laughs> and, and... Where where are you making this exactly? Like on the side of a building, on the field, like just a, just across the field on their side of the field. Okay, so like the weird NFL laser painting stuff. Yes, but you know, arcane mark. Right. Okay. And an insult. I use my left hand to do it. No one recognizes my writing. <laughs> okay. Um. So yeah. Um. Everyone's gathered together. You're all wearing uh, ratty clothing because you know you're going to get dirty. And your parents would kill you if you went out in anything actually decent. Uh, real quick question. Do we know anything about the enemy team? You've fought each other many, 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 many times. Um, there's nothing especially well-known uh, like the, as far as strategy goes. Uh, again, I'm not making this a huge mechanical thing. Um, but yeah, you, you know some of their tricks. Um, one or two of the members you know are, are rather prone to starting a fight or playing dirty. Um, you know, especially one, uh, one of the larger boys who works, uh, at the Smith with you, Smithy, uh, at some point and with the Horse Master later and rotating crafts and everything, you've learned, uh, Billford is quite the bully. That gap-toothed smile and, and an annoying laugh. And he's just always been picking on the smaller kids and taking their lunches and starting fights and pushing people around. He's mine. So, as the game begins, a, uh, a one of the kids brings with them uh, a roughly stuffed bag of sheepskin leather 
just stuffed with rags. Uh, it's kind of lumpy. It's not like a solid soccer ball or football or anything like that. It's just kind of lumpy and <laughs> obviously, it's straw. obviously, it's just a, a stitched together leftover skins that the um, the tanners like couldn't use or make any good use out of. That it's just kind of roughly stitched together with leftover leather pieces. And uh, without much to do, um, everyone kind of lines up in the middle of the field, facing off about 10 people to each team with large overturned um, oaken barrels that probably at one time or another used to hold uh, mead or, or wine or, or something like that. Um, some of the staves are smashed in or there's you know leaky holes and whatnot they're completely unusable for anything else they're just held up with you know two wooden blocks to either side to keep them from rolling around the place kind of half submerged <laughs> in the mud at this point over the years <laughs> you no know, this sounds like the baseball field in my mom's hometown yeah it's just an empty field that's just kind of been co-opted that no one else has any real use for um so yeah without too much uh to do about it um you know this older kid uh, who's not actually playing he's kind of sort of acting as a ref so to speak or at least the scorekeeper it just reminds you no no everyone's got the calling later so let's have a clean game shall we staring directly at billford no bloody noses this time i hope and he just returns with a gap toothed grin I don't like that kid. And with that, it's like, right, we'll be playing a five point game. Don't kill each other. And with that, he steps back and throws the ball up into the air. Um, before he does, mm -hmm. as we're doing the, you know, the exchanges, the, the stare down, I want to pick out one that looks like the smallest. Like, why am I even here playing? <laughs> And just do a finger across the throat, intimidate. You you <laughs> stare you're staring down across uh, right in front of you, like three feet separating the two of you. How how tall is your character? My character is six foot tall. Six foot tall. You're a tall fucking kid. Um, you are staring. That's like down. Alex's height at the end of high school. That's true. You are staring down at a five foot two stick of a willow girl with short cropped hair um not standing in a stance or anything just kind of standing with knees together and um like looking around nervously like how do i play <laughs> yeah i want to do the whole look right at her make sure she has eye contact and then just drag my finger across my throat so he just immediately uh takes a step back from the line until one of her, her teammates grabs her arm and, and hauls her back to the line. Any other interactions from anyone? Uh, I would like to bite my thumb at them. <laughs> okay. You proceed to, to make several rude gestures and the uni you, several universally understood gestures that all the, the younger folks are well familiar with. And with that, the ball is in the air, and I'm going to ask. Um, we'll do a we'll do a bunch of rolls here. So I'm going to actually ask you guys all to make initiative rolls, just to keep things a little organized. You realize we won't be on there because we don't have. Uh... You can drag them onto the map on your own. God, Mark. Why do you make us do things? It's not hard. How can you tell your D&D &D group is spoiled? <laughs> it's fucking ready. Damn. Finn's dead to the world. Hold on, I got this. Do I have anything that... Yeah. Hey, Finn, we're awesome. Okay, do we have everyone? 
I'm I good with Thane that. consistently going ahead of me if it sorts alphabetically afterwards. I'm not sure if it does, but... I'm cool with that. I ain't bitching. Yeah, it's up to you guys. I just said I'm not bitching. God! Yeah. Alright. Um, so, Thane, as the, the lanky one of the group of your team, you're quite frequently uh, called upon to be the the athletic leader, so to speak. <laughs> You're playing center. Well, of though, course. Though it's not really all that organized. You just happen to be in the middle, middle of the mess right now. Go ahead and roll a dexterity roll. Just flat dex? Just flat dex. I'm going to keep the rolls pretty simple, guys. Just straight up attributes. Unless you want to come up with anything inventive to explain why you would be rolling something else. Is very, very open ended. Alright, works for me. How you doing there? I'm just waiting for this fucking thing to open because it's taking about six years. Ah. There we go. Okay, you have the ball. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, I, w I'm the furthest one up, aren't I? You're you're all at the middle of the line. The ball dropped. Okay. You managed to stick your foot out and pull the ball back to you. You have control. Okay, doke. Uh, in that case, I'm going to run for it. Okay. Make a break for the uh, the fucking barrel. Awesome. Yola, what do you do? Um. Yola wants to try to trip a kid. Okay, go ahead and make a CMB. This is gonna go so well. I love being a sorcerer. <laughs> Keep in mind, you're fighting other kids. Like the Wait, 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 are... can I use my dex for that? No, I can't, because no. it's not a weapon-based one. No. Damn. Um, actually, a 12 is all you need to beat. Yes! You are dealing with other young people. I hope it was someone taller than me. <laughs> so, you basically, you managed to trip another kid who is several years younger than you, happens to be about the same size and build as you. They go down into the mud. Ah, you are shrimp. You are clear. Cade. Cade is going to uh, make use of the rope at any good time, uh, whether it be somebody that's in front of Thane or quickly advancing uh, and might catch up with them. I'll say for uh, convenience sake right now, um, the rope is not immediately near anyone. You're a little, right. you're a little off center. Well, in that case, I'm going to go with the tripping as well. Okay, go ahead and roll C and B. Your opponent is a little bigger. You attempt to make the trip attempt, but you're, you manage to foul your own feet up in theirs. And uh, they, they keep running, but uh, your foot slides in the mud and you end up taking a slide yourself. Yeah, that's at a negative two as well, so it's five. Oh yes, right. So yeah, you're you're down in the mud. Cassidy, you got a small little wisp, right. of a girl in wisp of a girl in front of you. What do you do? Yeah, I'm gonna play some defense for uh, Jane here. So to get her out of the way, I'm just gonna shove her out of the way. Okay. Uh, same thing. Roll CMB. You shove her so hard that she goes flying. She actually you actually push her into one of her teammates, and they both go down in a tangle of limbs. Dirty. Ben, your your faced off opponent is now down on the ground with this younger girl uh, tangled up in them. You are f fully clear. What do you do? I am going to leap over them and uh, tag alongside. Uh... Not really alongside, but next to Thane, uh, keeping myself open for if he needs to pass. Awesome. Thane, you have the control of the ball. You're making a run for the goal. There's uh, 
Ilford standing in front of you. With a grin just waiting to take you out. Okay, uh, I would like to juke around him, I guess. Okay. Um... So I like, do the do the good old stutter step and then try and break his ankles as we you know go <laughs> one way. Okay, I'm gonna say go ahead and make an acrobatics for the CMD to effectively uh, kind of tumble around him without actually tumbling. All right, works for me. Fuck, I'm not good at acrobatics. Ah. Yeah, I went into climb and I went into swim, but no acrobatics. Oops. Oh, that Rip. doesn't look good. Yeah, that's a two. You try to you try to get around Billford, and he just uh, stiff arms you, and like you just hit a wall. Your feet slide out from under you, where your chest does not move further any further, and you are just flat on your back, gasping for air. The ball <laughs> is now, the ball is now in Billford's control. Yola. All right. Yola is going to sit on the kids she knocked down. <laughs> She's squirming underneath you, just yelling. It's like, get off! <laughs> Mud's my mouth. <laughs> get off me! I will do everything in my power to fart on her. <laughs> that might get everything. Um, oh, fart chance. Oh, I can't believe I'm asking you to do this. Roll, <laughs> roll, roll fortitude. Excellent. Wait, wait, you have to roll fortitude to fart on. No. Without um, pooping. You, you're trying <laughs> so so hard. Things might have gotten a little messy. Excellent. You just pooped on this poor girl. You had to roll fortitude. What was that? No, no, I rolled fartitude. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, there's a whole lot of mud around and probably goes a little unnoticed. <laughs> Cade, you are on the ground. Uh, he's going to pick himself up, not worrying about brushing the mud off and just run. And I guess he had his, his eyes closed in the mud, of course, and he's not wiping away. So you just see just these two little specks of white out of this muddy face as he's trying to barrel into anybody um, that has the ball. Okay. All right, we'll come to you on next round for that. Uh, standing up was probably the... Um, I'll say you're chasing after Billford, as he seems to be the only one like left standing right now. As he's uh, running with the ball after knocking Thane down. Cassidy. I want to tackle Billford. Go ahead and roll CMB. All right, you managed to... You run at him, and you... Wrap your arms around his waist and you take him down. And you two are, are scuffling in the mud. Excellent. Someone get the ball! As you tackle him down to the ground, he starts elbowing you and a fight breaks out. Excellent! Pile on! Several kids also on both teams start piling onto you both. As you're struggling, throwing elbows and fists and kicks and everything all around you. Get away, Cassidy. Do the rest of you want to get involved? And if so, how? Fen? Fen is going to use this opportunity to take the ball and, if he can, take it all the way and try and shoot. Okay. There's no one stopping you and you score a point. Now if uh, the scuffle is not resolved by then, he will then participate. How so? Uh, Just well, well, actually, since you went uh, scored a point, we'll leave that as your turn for now. Bane, okay. what are you doing as this fight breaks out? Um, Backing up my homies, I guess. All right, are you like, how? Well, how many of them are there? Ten people on a team, a pylon with probably about like six people right now. Uh, I guess we will try and gang up on the one that uh, Cassidy is, is fighting with. The, the dude that fucking flattened my ass. 
Okay, Bilford. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, so you're you're jumping into the pile. Hell yeah, why not? All right, gotta back up, my girl. Yola, you're you're sitting on someone and possibly other things. When this fate breaks out, what do you do? I scramble up and run to join the fight. Okay, do you pile on or you pull people off? Just throw punch like. What I'm are you gonna doing? try to bite the first person I see that is not. Someone who I regard as a friend. <laughs> oh, okay. So you're a biter. All right. <laughs> hey, listen. I just took a shit on someone. Are you really shocked I'm a biter? <laughs> Cade. It's going to try to hold the one that Yola is punching. Okay. Mm. Um, go ahead and make a CMB with uh, plus four. Yeah, Bilford is like, yeah. You are just, you guys are just wailing on him. You got both of his arms held behind his back. <laughs> you're still like, you're all on the ground wrestling, but uh, like, you got all of his limbs wrapped up. Like, he kind of is just squirming right now. Cassidy. All right. So I got a couple people on top of me, right? Like in a pile. Yep. With Bilford underneath. But mm -hmm. they've, like, pinned his arms to the ground. Yeah. But the, uh, the play has been made. Has the ref, like, started blowing the whistle or anything, or...? There's there's no whistle blowing. Oh, we're just being allowed to... This is, this is not an organized event. This is a bunch of kids <laughs> playing a game. <laughs> is there anyone watching us? Uh, there's a bunch of... Um, some of the... A lot of kids from town... Uh, some of the the young adults, uh, that's like a, a uh, rough laid stone wall that a lot of the 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 girls in the nicer dresses, you know, like the, the weavers and the scullery maids and the whatnot from the keep kind of gather together. This is like a social event, right? And they're all... Ooh, maybe. They're all kind of, uh, you know, chit-chatting and talking. Oh, kind of sort of paying attention to the game. So like, oh, the, that rough game that, you know, the young kids and boys play. Um, there's a few, uh, one or two, like, older gentlemen um, getting together, drinking a few beers. You know, you see some money changing hands. All right. I want to lean in and say loud enough that Bilford, his name? Yeah. Could hear? Oh, you're right in front of him, so yeah. Yeah, I want to make sure that he can hear me. If you don't start playing nicely, you will not like it. Go ahead and roll Intimidate. Wow. Oh. I would have to roll a one. Unfortunately, like your Kate and Mud, he met, he took you out. Uh, you took him out, but yeah, you know, he's not intimidated by you in the least. Uh, you probably have you know like a probably have a cut above your eye at this point, maybe a bloody nose slightly. Like everyone's kind of beaten up at this point. Okay. All right, and with this, uh, instead of going through the whole routine, I'm gonna gonna ask everyone to make a raw d20. We're gonna average these. Excellent. Motherfucker. Excellent. What was that 19 before? Bruh. Bruh. I got you. <laughs> I can't make up for the fucking nine and the five though. <laughs> the most average of rolls. Keep kids win! Yeah. Shortly after this scuffle has happened, some one or two of the the older gentlemen get involved. You see, um, some of the the apprentices from the smithy that you're well familiar with, Cassidy. Uh, you also see some of the the workers from the the stables, some of the farmers. You know, some of the more rough and tumble types walking over and, and pulling the kids apart. Some bodily lifting 
people away from the mess. And everyone's getting firmly reprimanded for, you know, scuffling on calling day and, and what a mess you look like. And <laughs> you see one, one mother coming to claim their, their youngest daughter and, and berating her for how bad she smells. Like, Go take a bath, young lady. You smell like shite. Oh, that's that's terrible. What what have you done to this Yellow poor cattles, girl? Maniacally. <laughs> um, and yeah, so you guys have the the accolades of winning the the match for the year, and the bragging rights that go along with that. Billford, the bully, you know, gets up, scuffles, and like throws a few people off of him. And uh, when one of the adults tries to pull him to his feet, he just kind of like shrugs off the hand and goes walking off on his own. No one seems to be minding him. Like no parents are picking him up or anything like that. Just going Aww. off, just going off oh, on no. his own. Oh no! Damn it! Now I have to go make friends with the bully. And uh, um, slide, slide note. Thank you for the follow, uh, Ender the Fox. And, hey. and, and I'm not quite sure how to read that. But thank you for the follow anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Um, me, words, not good. So yeah, everyone gets uh, cleaned up. You guys won the match. And uh, your parents kind of give you a, a once over for you know getting into a fight and getting messy on calling day and trying to patch you up as best as you can. Cassidy, your dad is... Uh, He's not really berating you so much as, like, he's reprimanding you for not keeping your temper. Um, but at the same time, you know, how do you want to, how do you want to sell it? Like, do you take blame? Do you, do you make excuses? I, I understand I should keep my temper better, but it was in the protection of my friends. They were fighting dirty. The other team. So are we. <laughs> I don't know that. You're you're all you're all off on your own. You are not together at this point. You're off with your parents. All right, so Cassidy, your father um, just kind of gives you like a, a head nod, and it's like well, you shouldn't start fights, but if you're gonna fight, you better be the one to finish it. Yep. We won. And with the 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 word that you know you won, and he just gives you like a, a very rare smile. This is not a man who smiles or is he's not very expressive. And he just gives you a nod and sets you on to the you know to the baths to get clean up. You've got a hell of a shiner though. Well I'm sure I've docked a few two two teeth loose and Yep. Then um your mother kinda fusses over you and how how do you explain Uh, Finn tells her he didn't get involved in the fight. Oh, that's right, you didn't. You're a good kid. But you helped win the match for them. Um, backtracking just a little bit. Um, <laughs> backtracking a little bit. One of the points was helped out as uh, Cade. Um, the other team just suddenly found itself like tripping the entire team all at once. <laughs> Sweet. As, as uh, Thane was able to to take the ball from from one of the smaller kids and run it to the goal, I didn't want to ignore that part. Um, okay. um, Yola wants to go home and dump herself into some cold water and quickly change. <laughs> Are you trying to avoid notice from your folks? Uh, no, I'm just going to do that thing that teenagers do, where they just blast past. And just talk so much that the parents don't get a chance to get a word in edgewise. And they can't stop me without actually bodily stopping me. While I go rush to clean up. Because, you know, it's calling day. Okay, so you, and you, you just shit on some girl. But I don't explain <laughs> that part. I leave that part out of my my incessant teenage squawking. Right. So as, as you like burst in the door and start running upstairs right away, your mother yells after you, Don't slam the... Slam! 
Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> Um, I do. I'm- I feel bad for this bully kid. I feel like shit now. For- for different reasons now. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> Good choice of words there. <laughs> listen. Listen. And so I'm gonna grab, like, a couple of pastries. And, okay. Okay, like, you... a stuffed pork bun. Alright, so you- so you know well in advance that there will be huge feasting. Um, and, like, you definitely don't want to ruin your appetite for this one. I'm not. I'm grabbing a couple and putting them in a little, like, cloth and tying it up. I'm gonna go take it to the bully, because I feel bad for him. Oh, okay. Um... So I'm, like, grabbing a couple pork buns, which are my personal favorite type of bun. And sure. then, and then like, a sweet pastry or something. Something, you know, one of those yucky, gross sugar cookies or something that no one's gonna miss. If people tell me that those are delicious, but I think they're fucking lying. Finished off, but, like, you know, package of those things last night. Anyway, Ugh. um... But anyways, and then I want to go try to find this kid and give him a little package. Alright, so, uh, you... Your parents remind you that you certainly do not have time to go gallivanting around town. And the ceremony is about to be around, around there, a... probably. Maybe. We'll see. Whatever, I'm gonna tie this thing, I'm gonna stick it under, you know, my skirt or my wrap or something else. Just, you know, some way fashion this little package to me. Okay. In preparation it, to give this bully kid, who I now feel bad for, because his parents don't love him. <laughs> um, Thane, um, you make your ways back to the kitchens, which are in a fervor, uh, trying to get everything prepared. And Magar, the head chef, is is barking orders. Um, your mother is is likewise organizing the uh, the scullery maids in preparing this. And no, don't do that. And oh, no, the tablecloth has to be set this way. And <laughs> they they barely even take heed of you returning home. All right, then uh, I guess I'll just clean up real fast and offer whatever help I can to uh, the cooking and nonsense before I have to ski daddle out the door. Okay. Um, you know, just as you're heading up, um, your father does uh, manage to catch you. And he just yells, he's like, go get cleaned up and get back down here. We got tons of work to do. Don't dilly dally. Okay, Dad. Um, and Cade? Cade is uh, just going in and getting cleaned up. He tries desperately not to make too much, or to take too much of a fuss from his parents. And um, he actually says, well, Ma, I do have to go um, to see the father. Kind of uh, hurries himself along. Okay. Um, as you get home, you find that your uh, your best tunic, boots, fresh underwear are all laid out, pr fresh press on your bed waiting for you. And your mother is just fussing over your hair. Yes. And, and, you know, just... Adjusting your collar a hundred times, making sure that you got everything on. It's like you know, make sure like you you remember this and you got your lines right, and make sure you got the oath and 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 repeating herself like fifty times. I'm sure. He takes it in, but then he says, oh, "Ma, not that too, Nick. Come on." <laughs> <laughs> uh, you wanted to head off to Father James, was it? Right. Okay. Um, you can certainly uh, do so. You might miss uh, the, some of the early festivities, but not too much. Like, you're not missing anything major. Um, and then we have Fen. Uh, Fen is... Like, is the fair going on right now, or is everything still being prepared for it? Um, so, the way the celebration kind of works is... Like any fair day, there's plenty of booths and visitors kind of set up like early in the morning, but the main festivities don't really kick in until uh, later in the day. But there's still plenty of prep being done. Some things are open early. Um, but the, the main actual like feast doesn't happen until after the calling ceremony itself. But before then, there's uh, some fair games and and other stuff that you all kind of don't want to miss. 
All right, Fen is going to split his time in between, uh, you know, just doing the games and all that, and hanging out with his friend, uh, pranking, pranking anyone that he thinks he can prank with and get away with it. Okay. Um, any particular pranks in mind? Uh, something to do with, like, um, I actually don't know. Okay, we can, we'll uh, we'll get back to that. Not a problem. Um, so yeah, you meet up with Nessa at some point, um, and you got are just kind of trolling through the the fairgrounds, seeing what uh, you can get up to. You know, maybe uh, sneaking a a treat off a table or something, um, that kind of thing. Um, and with that. Um, Unless anyone has anything very particular that they want to do, we're going to jump right into a festival. Festival! Let's uh, do it. Alright, so uh, several hours before the actual calling ceremony itself begins is the calling festival. or uh, Basically a, a typical uh, Ren Faire kind of lots of random things going on. Uh, there are certain fair games, uh, uh, archery targets are set up some uh, like the makeshift strength test your strength kind of game a uh, few other uh, odds and ends here and there a pie eating contest at some point you know everything you can possibly think of there's plenty of bards jugglers performers um you know, uh, as still children, you're not allowed to have any beer yet, but you're waiting eagerly as young kids tend to, good young kids, um, you get to have your, your first mug of ale after the calling. Cool. Is there anything that anyone in particular would like to do? Um, Feel beer. I'm gonna keep an eye out. Like, I'm, I don't have much hope. But there's always a chance for my actual father to show up. Okay, go ahead and roll perception. <laughs> you do not spot your father in the crowds. There's lots, so yeah. many colorful outfits and people coming and going and strangers in town that no matter how hard you look, there's, you just can't spot him. You're not sure if he's here or he's not. Oh well. I'm a little disappointed, but I've come to expect this thing from him. Anyone else have anything in mind? Any games that you want to play? Or... The old beer. What's up? The old beer. That's not a fair game. I'm still not hearing you correctly. What? The old beer. The old beer? I don't know this. Steel beer. Beer. Oh, steel beer. Oh, steel beer. Wow, okay. Sorry. Yes, Mark. Steel beer. Sorry, it just doesn't come across my speakers for some reason. Um, You can try. Slide a hand check. Deal. Stealing is slide a hand. Working on it. Got this. This thing's totally going to load someday. I can't believe this thing still is so slow. Uh, it's Pathfinder Sheet. It's. Yeah. Yeah. Um. You are. Uh, describe for me how you're going about this. That might, might change the result. I'm using my size. If it's keg poured. As I assume it is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go, like, try to climb under the bench with, like, I have a mess kit technically on me at all times because I say it's in my backpack. <laughs> and I'm going to try to fill my cup from there. And uh, literally trying to do it from, like, underneath where the eggs are. Okay. Um... So that hopefully no one even sees me because I came at it from behind. And just went right under, and I'm like, 
<laughs> yeah, I got this. And then I'm gonna try to sneak out the way I came in, which is to say back under the table, bench, whatever it is these things are propped up on. Okay. I'm gonna say that uh, one of the, the vendors who has traveled to White Coast for this event, who has one of these giant oaken um, barrels that are literally like just sitting in the back of a wagon, taking up the entire space, um, is watching carefully for all the it's a fairground there's tons of people running all over the place he knows that people are going to try to to sneak a, a drink or two he's keeping an eye out uh, over the bench but he's not looking under the bench excellent so you are able to get a uh half well, you get a flat full flagon depending on how much you want to push press your luck i'm not going to try to press it too much i just want to try it all right so you, you get like a not really. yeah so you get like a cup full Excellent. Uh, of uh, good stout, very hoppy, pretty bitter ale. But it's very potent. Excellent. Are you uh, down at all, or are you taking a sip and be disgusted with it? I'm going to take a sip and then bring it back to my friends and offer them preemptive sips as well. All right. Uh, so you you all kind of get together and, and bump into each other and start kind of Traveling through the fairgrounds as a, you know, as a, a kid mob almost, as, as they tend to. <laughs> uh, everyone just kind of, you know, like, how do you get everyone's attention? How do you declare that you have this thing so, like, the people walking around you aren't going to give you crap? I walk up to them, I nudge them with my arm, and then I do the eyebrow wiggle thing and point at my cup. What is it that you have there? Mel! I'll stick it under her nose. Extremely aromatic, unmistakable. You're not supposed to have that. Oh, hey, let me get some of that. I want to try. <laughs> I shrug at the goody two shoes and pass it around. <sighs> Come on, you know you want to try two, Cassidy. No. I'm going Peer to like you're pressure. supposed to. Peer oh, cool kids are doing pressure. it. You're only going to be waiting a couple of hours. Come on, give it a try. Do it, do it, do Look, <laughs> you guys can do it if you want to, but I'm going to wait to drink my first glass of ale when we're supposed to. Right, we'll give so them each a look. Right, so Someone does not deter me. She's just afraid. It's okay, guys. Oh, damn. Throw down. <laughs> Cassidy's reaction. I'm not afraid. I'm just want to do this right. It's okay. And you can tell us if you're afraid. We're your friends. It's all right. It's completely okay to be afraid. It's natural. I would like to point out, this is literally how drugs happen. <laughs> <laughs> I used to deal once upon a time. I know exactly how this goes. <laughs> I used to buy once upon a time. This is exactly how it went. As we are live on Twitch. Um, I do drugs. People do drugs while on Twitch. I'm pretty sure I'm okay. <laughs> Don't do drugs, kids. Bad. Um... Do drugs, but then stop when you need to be responsible. Yeah, I'm just going back. Anyway, um, <laughs> so yeah, so you kind of all you all pass around the the flagon. Uh, Cassidy uh, is the responsible one of the group, apparently. <laughs> you all only get like a mouthful or two. Like it's you only manage to fill half a flagon. There's really not a whole lot there to split between um, three people. Yes, but we got it, and that's the real victory. Indeed. Uh, so yeah, uh, we're gonna cut over to Thane briefly. Excuse me, Cade. Ooh, sorry. Wow, and here I thought I was popular. God damn it. <laughs> Cade, you arrive at the Duchy's uh, household chapel. Uh, grounds that are well familiar to you. Alright, uh, he will first... Just kind of case the place out. Has anything changed recently? Is anything uh, strange? Um, there's a 
There's a, you know, some extra greenery, like a wreath kind of thing set up. Um, you, you immediately recognize it just as a, a festivi festivity decoration, nothing extraordinarily significant. Um, nothing else. It's, it's very, you know, Father James kind of keeps things in a very orderly fashion and like, it's a well-worn chapel. It's obviously uh, well loved and taken care for. Uh, it's an older structure, uh, probably one of the oldest structures uh, in the duchy. Um, but every every you're probably familiar with every stone and every crack, and everything looks just fine. All right, then he will find uh, the father and start bragging upon his win. Uh, first off. Ah, one, one have you. I hope you won't let it go to your head and thank the graces for the gods who have enabled this victory. Of course not, but I'm sure Caden was watching. I'm about to go have my first cup of ale. Do you think it will prove? Oh, oh. I don't think the gods begrudge us a few libations every now and then. After all, <laughs> we are only human. Do you think Shailene would be impressed me starting this already, being so young? Well, I know the gods... No one can speak to the mind of the gods, of course, but I think they're impressed with us in uh, their own ways. Who's to say? I'm quite excited for the ceremony, for the festival. I think I'll go. Will you be going? Oh, I think I'll go to the, the ceremony itself, but the, uh, the fairgrounds are a bit too rambunctious for my tastes. I'm getting a bit on in years, after all. I much favor a, a quiet evening than... Well, you have fun now. Uh, don't let that stop you. Enjoy your childhood while you have it. it. Won't last forever, after all. All right, Father. Well, I'll bring you back something. Oh, well, that's very kind of you. Have fun now, and uh, don't get into too much trouble. All right. Uh, he feels like he's done what he's got to do, and then uh, he happily runs off to the festival. Okay. Um, you managed to catch up with uh, the rest of your friends. Um, probably like a, another hour or two has passed uh, since the uh, the peer pressure event. Um, everyone's just kind of hanging out, a little bored maybe. You, you know, just kind of roaming, um, checking out some of the the jugglers and uh, you know, the bard singing and things like that, as one does. It, it's not like a super like adrenaline-filled rush of excitement. It's it's a fair. All right. Well, he will he will come to the rest of his friends with a barrel uh, that used to be filled with water, but is now turned from water to alcohol due to a spell. <laughs> Look what I have, and we have Caden's permission. <laughs> Wow, okay. <laughs> I like this guy. Um, Mike, do you honestly believe that this is okay, or are you just trying to convince yourself? Um, I honestly believe it's okay. All right. Um, from what I remember of Caden Kalian's uh, dictates, there pretty much aren't any. Um, I'm not 100% up on my deities, but I think that sounds right. So mischief is his kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. May not be you know super approving, but I don't think that uh, he'd begrudge you for it. Uh, are you kidding? I think he'd think this is hysterical. Uh, yes and no. I mean, you guys are kids still. Here. You are kids still, and it's not completely irresponsible if I remember the character correctly. 
Yeah, but we're also on the cusp of, of adulthood by a couple hours. So, I mean, this is pretty much exactly what he's about. Right? Okay, mm-hmm. this is all about celebration. He's all about celebration. Okay. Um, so, as, as you appear, um, you know, just looking up at the night sky, whatever, you know that the, the actual calling ceremony will probably be happening in about um, an hour or two, roughly, before the, the real feasting and... and partying and whatever actually starts to go on. Do you all indulge? I indulge. Indulge. Now, Mike, is this a full-on barrel keg or just like a hogshead? Um, it is as much as I can use the spell for. Let me see that. I'm more concerned about what you can carry. Oh, I'm pretty strong. And he can just roll it. So there you go. <laughs> it is a barrel. For anyone who has actually rolled a keg, I assure you it is not that easy. <laughs> I do have a 15 strength. What's up? I do have a 15 strength. Oh, yeah, you're totally fine. Um, so, yeah, I'll leave it to a judgment call. Do you want to have, like, a full-on barrel that, like, you have to, you can barely wrap yes. both arms around? Yes, absolutely. All right, so you're kind of, like, staggering down... Uh, into the fairgrounds with this thing. Um, most people are probably mistaking you for like someone just running an errand. Uh, not thinking like this is for you and your friends. <laughs> um, and you find everyone and you just kind of set yourselves up at a uh, mouth of an alley between two buildings and you have one flagon to kind of share amongst yourselves. Well, I can already see how this ceremony is going to go. Cassidy isn't going to drink, but she's not going to stop them either. But she will run interference if any adult should happen to start heading that way. <laughs> All right. You got your friends back, but uh, you still think it's a lousy idea. Well, I mean... <laughs> That's a good friend right there. Yeah. That, right there. That What I just posted is exactly what's going on right now. Designated like, di- diverter. Like, I won't, I won't kill someone for you, but I'll help you hide the body. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I'm gonna ask everyone else who is drinking to roll uh, a pair of fort saves as much as uh, possible. This went excellent for me last time. As much as possible, try to roll them together so it's easier to read. Like that? Yep, that's fine. Wow, guys. <laughs> okay, you need a second one. What's with all the high Cade. lows, guys? I don't know, man. <laughs> Cade, you're probably due to some of the non-human blood <laughs> in your system. You find yourself a little more resistant to the magical effects of this beverage. Everyone else, you're feeling a little tipsy, but you're not like everybody in the club get tipsy. But you're not following falling over drunk. Um, your words might be a little <laughs> slurred, maybe a little more methodical as you're thinking about what you're saying. But uh, you're still quite cognizant of your surroundings and not really too affected. You're definitely feeling it, though. So you're saying it's the perfect drunk. Pretty much, yeah. Um... Without realizing it, you guys um, have only had like two cups, two flagons worth <laughs> to get to this effect. But uh, yeah, nothing like a cheap drunk. Well, yeah, I mean, we've never fucking drank before. And your kids. Well, relatively kids anyway. Um, so yeah, you guys uh, pass the next hour or two sharing uh, the bounty of the priesthood. And uh, after a while, you hear um, a bell, <laughs> uh, kind of like a signal bell, uh, methodically ringing. Bang, dong, 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 dong. All right, guys, we gotta go. Dude, that's our cue. And you hear a town crier uh, calling out, Gala for the, c- the ceremony! All those eligible for calling gather in 
the keeps, uh, oh, I forget which, courtyard, courtyard, that thing. That poor caller. <laughs> He's so confused. Oh, God. No, that's just your GM. Um, so as everyone gathers, uh, you find yourselves standing in the middle of that roadway of the keep. A small pavilion has been set up uh, at the head of the of the walkway. A uh, raised platform with um, four uh, very fancy-looking heavy oaken um, seats with uh, finely detailed scroll work. Ben, you actually recognize some of these as being your father's handiwork. Um, and you see seated... Uh, Seated there is uh, the Duke himself, Duke Bronkir. Sitting to his left, Gabriel, um, twin sister of Aru Kier, and the older brother, Leo Kier, sitting to his right. Surrounded uh, on either side were a series of older uh, men and women, masters of their crafts, wearing uh, ceremonial robes and uh, everyone has a brooch, a very large brooch actually, holding a, a very fine cloak over their shoulders and each one is in a symbol of their craft. You see Marlin, the master of the Duke's Rangers. Sinclair, the commander of the Duke's Garrison. Vincent, master of the Duke's scouts and trade. James, the priest of the Ducal family. Winston, the wizard that you had met previously. Pirani, a formidable green-tinted woman, master of the Duke's stables and agriculture. Lorne, the Duke's minstrel. And standing off to the side as Master of Ceremonies is Stevens, the Duke's Seneschal. Stevens gestures to all the young women, men and women, orphans, sons and daughters of the Keep to gather around the central courtyard in a single line. And as the ceremony begins, without going through too much... Everyone is kind of bored a little bit. It's a long, drawn out. Stevens is an older gentleman, very stiff and formal, insisting on every single phrase and formal word be spoken clearly and methodically. And now, as is tradition amongst the kingdom of Kyrsis and the Duke of White Coast, thus represented by the power granted upon him by the kingdom, I present the Duke and the Allegiance Oath. All applicants will repeat the oath and be judged worthy for mastership. And he gestures with both hands out to the collective line of children. As everyone in unison repeats the oath on Mark. Go ahead. Are you fucking I kidding? promise on my faith that I will be true to the Duke of White Coast and in turn the kingdom whole of Kyrsis never cause him or his harm and will observe my homage to him completely in good faith without, um... Um, ever ceasing? <laughs> uh, forgive me for the small little joke. I just want to see who would actually do it. Um, <laughs> what she said. <laughs> um, I will ask you this. Does anyone uh, try to repeat it from memory? Use a crib sheet or some other method? Or just kind of like do that weird faking, like kind of mutter with everyone else trusting to say the actual words? I try to do it from memory. Okay. We do a combination of memory and faking. <laughs> okay. 
Um, for anyone who... By the who time is... Yola gets to, um, um, she's kind of lifting up her skirt to look at her ankle, but unfortunately, she had to wash up, and she's like, shit, I smudged it! <laughs> <laughs> I would like, just for comedic sake, for anyone who would like to fake it, to please roll a performance or bluff check. Well, this is going to be good. There are only about 15 people standing up here. I'm bluffing so, through the so last, you, that so last people, little line. So people might notice. I would have done it from memory. All right, if you want to do it from memory, um, that's probably going to be an intelligence check. If I'm doing both, can I average? Feel feel free to roll both. I'll I'll work something out with the numbers. Alright, so intelligence and then whatever I don't remember. Mumble it out. Yeah, that was the same thing I did. Okay. Alright, okay. No one rolled under a ten. So no one notices you either getting the words a little wrong or faking it or whatever. You either say, recite the words perfectly, or you fudge it enough that no one notices. I pledge allegiance to the my king. <laughs> as as everyone kind of in that weird cacophony of kids who are like not quite on the same tempo with each other, um, as the the noise of the recital down, dies down, um, the duke uh, stands up. Uh, very tall, he's a very proud man, a short cropped uh, white speckled beard. And he just raises his hands with a, 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 a slight smile, not a particularly affable gentleman. Um, and he just recites on his on his own. Um, I, Duke Brunkel of the House of Kier. Watcher of the West, third in line of the throne of the Kingdom of Kyrsus, do accept your oath of fealty as true and good, and welcome you into our royal service. You come before us as boys and girls. Rise and be recognized as men and women of White Coast. And at that, the entire crowd rises up in cheers and shouting and a deafening applause. I wipe my brow and hope to God my mom didn't notice I fucked up the last line. As, as the Duke lets the applause uh, continue on for, for some time as everyone's you know very happy, smiling at each other, remembering their own choosing. He, he raises both of his hands, kind of shushing the crowd a little bit. And now, the choosing. May the master step forward and choose who amongst our young men and women of White Coast will serve under them faithfully. And as this, uh, everyone is kind of like looking around nervously. Uh, some people in the crowd are... are you know, heads together, whispering. You see a few coins changing hands. As you, as the the recently young adults of White Coast, know that this is kind of the moment of truth. Will you be called, or will you be left to wander the countryside or become lowly fishermen? Vincent, the master of trade and scouts, steps forward and with a thin raspy voice barely heard over the the courtyard even as it's quieted down um, calls out uh, a, a young gentleman uh, standing next to you I call Brian to service and I also call Fen to service Will you accept? 
Brian immediately replies, Yes, I honorably accept service, Master. Ben? Okay. Um, this is all out of character, by the way. So <laughs> if I deny one of them, can I still be accept or like uh, chosen by someone else? Extraordinarily unlikely. Okay. Uh... You, 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 all, you all as residents know it's kind of like a, an open secret that all the masters have long since uh, coordinated with each other to discuss the pros and cons of the different people up for service. Like, these choices are made ahead of time. Gotcha. All right. Uh, Finn will approach, you know, kind of bow respectively and uh, go by, or follow Brian, possibly go by his side if that's where we're going. Okay, you stand uh, slightly behind uh, the sh shadowy cloaked figure uh, who's stooped uh, in raspy voice, and you stand next to uh, this other kid, Brian, who's also taking service under him. Standing thankful that someone chose you. You look out into the crowd and you actually spot your parents. And your mother is just kind of has her hand clasped to her chest, like, oh, thank God he has a real job now. <laughs> Can't have this bitch at home anymore. He's got to get a fucking job. Get out the house. Sinclair, commander of the Ducal Garrison, steps forward. He calls several of the other people along the line to service, mostly uh, young men who look uh, ready for a fight and somewhat muscular and in good condition fit. And he calls, I also call Cassidy to service. Will you serve honorably? I will. And you too step in behind your new master. Father James, to much of the crowd's surprise, also steps forward. Well, young Cade has been quite uh, useful to me. I would call him to formal service under the God's light. Will you serve, young man? Aye, Father, I will serve. Good, the gods be praised. And you stand next to your new formalized master, who you feel is really more just formalizing the relationship you've already had. He tries not to look as proud and beaming as he is, but he's failing. <laughs> Marlin, master of the Duke's Rangers and Forest Master, steps forward, and he calls um, a, a Yankee, oh, Yankee, he's lanky young woman who uh, you are all familiar with as uh, Brittany much to many people's surprise not Brittany god damn hey. what the hell is her name you mean Beatrice Beatrice yeah. thank you god damn sorry about that <laughs> you should be so sorry and ashamed Mark we, as GMs, are flawless, and you really need to step <laughs> up your fucking game. It's a lot of names, okay? Um, Beatrice is called to service, and she just stands there kind of like slack-jawed. Like, like, for real? Are you fucking kidding me? But given her other options of becoming a fisherman or a fish wife, fisher's wife, or just, you know, traveling on her own, she's like, she just kind of shrugs and... It's like that slouched, nonchalant stride over. Yeah, sure. Whatever. I guess. And he also calls... Thane. Hey, Thane. What say you? You wanna learn some forest lore? Absolutely. Well, get on over here. And Thane scurries over gleefully. As you pass him, he claps Sorry, you on the shoulder. Yeah, no, uh, Thane makes zero effort to hide how thrilled he is. He was hoping for this one. 
And uh, with that, uh, there are two people left. Yola. Yola at this point is nearly crying. She's got that lip tremble thing. Her eyes are all welled up. Uh, Yola and um, one other young boy. Um, it's kind of like a... Not the most attractive young man in the world. He's kind of got like the pimply face and like his jaw's not on right. Just kind of looks like a bit of a dullard. Like very thick eyebrows kind of thing. And no, none of the masters actually come forward at this time. Uh-oh. And a few moments pass as, like, whispering starts to, to flood through the crowd. And a few pointed fingers. Oh, I feel so sorry for those two. Yellow starts pulling her hair. Um, with that, looking, uh, the duke rises, looking back and forth amongst the, the masters to make sure no one is calling anyone else. And he starts to raise a hand. Um, well, if there are no further callings to service, I will welcome you all to service in the town. Our fishermen always need good workers and it is a respectful trade. It should not be considered... Um, Excuse me, my lord, if I may. As uh, Master uh, Winston steps forward. Yola perks up. She's mostly looking for the fairy dragon, <laughs> but she does perk up. The crowd goes silent as it is very unusual and almost unheard of for a... a man in the duke's service known for practicing magic which is still a very dubious profession like it's unusual for any royal household to even entertain a, a sorcerer or wizard in the in the household to actually be recognized as a master is rare it's like um if i may i i, I think i'd like to call uh young yola there to service uh, We've met earlier, and she showed a, a spark of the talent. Uh, Yola stops pulling her hair and blinks a couple times, a little bit confused, doesn't quite understand what anyone's saying. Uh, but then she gets it, and she's like, oh, yeah, okay, and scuttles over before anyone can change their minds. Do me a favor, mm -hmm. since I think this would be hilarious. Go ahead and roll acrobatics. Yes. I'm gonna fall flat on my fucking face, and this is gonna be awesome. Or I'm no, gonna roll really well. I'm gonna fucking somersault in there, right? You, you stumble on a loose flagstone, um, but you keep your feet, and uh, you just kind of scamper over behind uh, Winston's robes. Um, your your bushy hair sticking out from the side, a stark contrast to his his long white beard as the, the dark curls uh, almost intertwine with it. We are one. And the, the duke uh, turns to the, to the old mage and smiles um, almost like patronizingly, but like in a good way. I'm just not remembering the right word. It's like, uh, okay, sure. I'm glad to see someone didn't, someone got called. Unfortunately, leaving the the other young boy just sitting with his hand, his head hung low, and he just kind of turns to to walk away. And the crowd, the crowd parts for him, and he just kind of gets lost in the crowd. Oh, oh yeah. now that the calling ceremony is completed, I welcome you all to share my table. And join us in a feast to celebrate the year's closing. And again, an outroar of cheers and applause for all the, the new apprentices. May all the new apprentices serve, serve your masters well and see to your duties. We will reconvene in 30 minutes for the feast. 
And with that, he uh, turns to his young daughter, Gabrielle, and takes her arm and they walk, uh, escorts uh, her and their brothers following behind them as the Duke returns to the keep. And with that, the kegs are broken open, tables are brought out into the middle of the courtyard, and the serving staff rushes to fill all the plates with an unending supply of food and sweetmeats and delicacies brought from around the kingdom. Huzzah. Congratulations. You are adults. Adult. You are considered adults of the realm now. You made it. Damn it, do we have to pay taxes now? <laughs> <laughs> Not as apprentices. Thank God. They're easing us into this adulthood. I like this realm way better than I like America and, to be honest, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, in this realm, you can do magic, so... Congratulations, you're 18. Get the fuck out I would, of there. I would be a peasant in this realm to pay taxes when I first become an adult. This is A-OK -okay with me. <laughs> and with that, I'm actually going to call the session. Seems like a good it's a, spot. It's a good, stopping, hey. it's a good stopping place. As you, uh, some time will pass. Uh, as you all learn your new duties... Training regimens for the garrison, um, you know, learning various lores and basically learning the the tasks of the trade, and uh, a good, good solid year will pass before we pick up next session. I'm gonna be 19. Do we level? Not just yet. What the fuck kind of fucking year is this? We didn't learn yet. <laughs> You're 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 learning. You're you're already level. Theoretical two. learning. Theoretical learning. We Theor didn't learn shit. You're learning how to swing a sword, okay? <laughs> Fucking learn me harder, <laughs> bruh. Um, I would ask that you all be prepared to level next session, okay. as it's very likely that that will happen. Um, and it'll save time if you're able to to do that mid session. Excellent. So what you're saying is update your out-of-game sheets, but leave your in-game sheets unupdated. Got I, it. Theoretically, it's all one sheet, but however you want to do it, sure. <laughs> theoretically, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got news for you, bub. Uh, don't hey, forget... just be glad that I keep a backup of my sheets, so that when you decide to delete my character again, you don't have to feel too bad. <laughs> I gotta say, I felt absolutely horrible about that, especially given the timing. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, uh, I I, always have a backup sheet. I just sometimes, depending on what kind of class I'm playing, I don't record my spells there. Or my skill ranks might be lagging behind on those sheets and stuff like that, but it's usually a pretty quick fix. I have the basics on there. So it's not a hard reset. Good, good. Gear. Gear is the other thing. Gear often will disappear yep. between sheets. Alright, uh, so with that, uh, thank you for our viewers very much for joining us tonight. Uh, as always, and again, thank you for the followers, uh, Vincent and uh, Ender Natherfox, I think. Uh, and as always, thank you for putting up with our bullshit. Um, and we'll be back next week. Like tomorrow. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll be t we'll be Bring back it. tomorrow for Tipsy's game, and then um, yeah. Arthas, and then uh, Toilet Spoiler Oblivion. alert: They're gonna die. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so bye bye. Bye, bye, bye. friends. Spoiler alert: You're gonna bye. die. <laughs>